Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're going to take a look at two knives that are fairly similar in a number of ways. They're both San Ramu knives. I got these from Gearbest. I bought these with my own pesos, shekels, cabbage, whatever you want to call it. And we've got two naked kind of frame lock knives. Uh, you've got the frame and nothing extra. Well, a little bit extra, but nothing extra in the handles. You basically have one side of steel on both of these and a blade and a way for the edge to be protected when it's closed and not much more. We've got over here, this is the San Ram U7073. It comes in black and in uh, satin, all steel, you know, just silvery looking. And we have this older version. This is the GB4-613. These are both 8CR13, 8CR14 MOV steel, something like that. This one says 8CR13 right on it. And the previous one doesn't say, but uh, some websites say it's got 8CR13. Some white websites say it's got 8CR14. Those two are very similar one to another. We've got a drop point blade. Because there's a belly here, I'm not going to call it a sheep's foot. Uh, sheep's foot and Warncliffe generally are when there's a flat edge here. It's close enough. If you call it a sheep's foot or a Warncliffe, you know, I'm not going to correct you. It's, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, right? So we got a nice kind of roundy, shapey blade here and handle. And we've got a more squared off clip point right here. And they both have a chisel grind, so they're flat on this side. And then you've got a flat grind here, or a saber grind, and then a final bevel. And both of them are made like that. So very similar in a lot of ways. I'm going to compare these two, and I'm going to suggest which one you might want to put into your pocket. Or maybe you don't want any of them and you just want to learn about knives. If so, stick around for the full comparison slash review. Like I said in the intro, this is not going to be, you know, very much, uh, well, it's not going to be strictly a review and it's not going to be strictly a comparison. I'm going to talk about both these knives and, uh, you know, just basically do a good talk about. The thing is, this one's harder to find right now. It says discontinued at Gearbest. I do not know if they will get it in stock again. It is an older model. Uh, you know, it's just got the three digit number system here on the blade. Uh, San Ramu went to a four-digit numbering system, you know, uh, almost about two years ago. Here's the, the 7037. I don't know if it came out in other colors. Uh, you might be able to find it at some other stores. I don't know. But you've got this black knife. You've got this glass-reinforced nylon uh, PA66 material. Is It's not G10 right there. You've got your frame lock arm here that you can see. There's the relief cut there so that uh, you've got the springiness for it. On both these knives, one of the flaws is there's nothing to stop this arm from going all the way through. So over time as it wears, it's going to get to the point where it's going to fail simply by wearing out and having the lock arm go all the way through. I really wish they would have put a larger, uh, you know, if this is sort of like a a washer, I guess you could call it a washer cover, this, you know, steel cover. You've got bronze or brass bronze washers inside there, but this steel part that you can see here, I wish they would have made it larger so that it would function as an over travel stop for the frame lock to go that way. So you wouldn't be able to have it, you know, work it's all the way all the way over. You would end up eventually having slightly play in the blade, but at least it would stay together. Right now, there's no blade play in either of these. Lockup is quite nice. Actually, this one does have a tiny bit of up and down blade play. Nothing side to side, but between the stop pin that you can see right there and the lock, there's just a slight bit of blade play. That being said, I've used this knife an awful lot. I had the uh, steel version of this knife, and that was back when I didn't understand how this locking system works. And I've seen this knife, the 7037. I've got a couple other models that have the same system here. The way it works is you 
let's see if it'll focus. There you go. You press the button in, and what it does is it releases the frame lock. It pushes the frame arm over, and you can see it with that ball right there. Hopefully you can see it there if it'll focus. You push that in and it pushes the frame lock over so that the detent ball that you see right there is actually more of a post than a ball. It was sitting in a hole in that, it was sitting in that hole right there, right by my fingernail. There's a hole where this uh, detent pin was sitting in. So it sits in that hole. You can see it's punched in right there. And that's what keeps the blade from coming loose. It just doesn't come loose. You can pull on it fairly hard. If you push too hard, of course, it'll move, but quite hard. It won't accidentally open up until you push that in and release that pin, and then you can open up the knife. That's what that does. You've got uh, no real sort of detent ball. You've got that stop pin instead. So you got a stop pin to start, keep it from coming loose. You've got this stop pin here, you know, that works for closing the knife. It stops so that your cutting edge doesn't come in contact with anything. And that same stop pin works on this side to stop the blade when the blade is locked up. It's a decent, reasonable, you know, skeletonized light knife. And so is this one. They are, let's do some of the specs on this thing. I'm not going to do all the specs. We'll do the uh, drop point one first and the clip point one second whenever I give you pairs of numbers. Cutting edge, 5.3 centimeters, 2.1 inches. 6.3 centimeters, 2.5 inches. So a whole lot more belly and more length in the blade. Uh, the blade thickness, 2.1 millimeters, 2.45 millimeters. So well, this guy's slightly thicker, a little bit more robust. I'm not going to talk about the handle length, but I will talk about the grip area because this one, you've got a little bit of the grip area coming into the base of the blade right there. So your finger comes in like that and comes around. You get a very good three finger grip if you've got a large hand like mine bordering an extra large, but uh, the pinky just doesn't quite want to go on there. So the grip area on this guy is 7.8 centimeters, right on three inches. And the grip area on this one is a long flat zone. You've got a little bit of jimping on the bottom of the blade there for some grip and some jimping on the bottom of the handle right there. 8.9 centimeters, three and a half inches of good grip. You've also got some jimping up here on the back of the spine as well, where your thumb goes. This guy's got no jimping anywhere except for on the release arm right here. So that helps when you're using the knife, you got some grip, but it doesn't really help when you go to release the uh, knife because you push here with your thumb more so than, you know, at the top like you do on a tr traditional frame lock. Instead, I find myself pushing on the side right there. And, you know, that's how I do that. Uh, the handle thickness on both of these is very close to the same, right around a quarter inch, 6.5 millimeters. Uh, the total length when it's open, five and a quarter inches, six and a quarter inches. Oh, I didn't do the centimeters. Oh, the centimeters will be on the screen. You would have seen them already. Uh, the weight, 42 grams, one and a half ounces, 61 grams, 2.2 ounces. And the price, uh, this guy is about $7 Canadian, uh, $5.50 US, something like that. No longer available at Gearbest, but maybe will be again. I'll put links in the description. This guy's a bit more. He's about $9.50 Canadian or $7.50 US. And this knife is available in both the black and the steel satin color at Gearbest. Uh, there's only a handful left in black, and there's a whole bunch left in the satin steel color. So what other kinds of things we've got? Like I said, this one's got that thumb stud right there. This one's just got sort of an opening hole right there to deploy the blade. Um, you've got that sort of material here that's not G10. That gives you a little bit of traction on the side when you're holding it and you're going to use it. The grip I often use is like this. It's very good in the right hand, but I often use it in the left hand as well. And you can get a pretty good grip in the left hand too. Pinch grip works very well with this. Your fingers sort of wrap around there 
and does some really good cutting that way. Very stabby on both of these. Um, the grip on this one is very standard. This one's good for a backhand grip either way if you wanted to, as well as your, your traditional forward grips. This one's not so good with a backhand grip. You end up getting the blade into the palm of your hand right there. It's just the way it feels. If you do the blade forward, you can do it a little bit better, you know, sort of how you hold a cram bit maybe, and that's sort of okay. It's a little bit uncomfortable. So you've got more grip options with the second one than you do with the first one. Uh, both of them can work as bottle openers. You can, uh, let's close the blade up to talk about that stuff. You can use this carabiner here and use that part right there to get over top of a pop bottle. Um, I don't have one here. I don't have any pop bottles in the house at all. Now, let's pretend this is the top of a pop bottle and uh, you just sort of put it on there and you flip the lid off like that. This one also works as a bottle opener and you use this lip here, that little extension that they've got growing out of there. And same way, yeah. Get that under there and you just sort of put it on and flip the lid off. And it works quite well. You can put it on the other side and lift it off this way as well. And it works just great. This guy's got a lanyard hole option if you want to put a lanyard on there. Uh, you've got all the stuff screwed on here and that protects your cutting edge right there. Although it is so close to the side that it's hard to get your finger underneath there at all to cut it. But you can on this part of the edge right here. It's protected up here, but here you do have a tiny bit of access. If you touch it the wrong way, you could cut your finger a little bit. This guy, not a chance because of the way you've got this uh, PA66 there. Totally protects the cutting edge. There's no way you're going to cut yourself in here. And with this carabiner clip, you can clip it on anything and let it hang. And remember I said it's only an ounce and a half. It's not going to get in your way. It's not going to, you know, be a problem. Really good if you're doing a very, very light kind of carry and you want a knife with you, but you don't, you know, want a big blade or something. You want something very light, just on the very, you know, small off chance that you might need a cutting edge. And that's what this guy will do for you. You've got your detent ball right there. And, uh, you know, it'll just sort of slide in there. And right now you can maybe see the detent hole right there. And that hole is what keeps it from opening easily. So a traditional kind of detent on here and this sort of newfangled fancy thing on this one. Like I said earlier, they both have phosphor bronze on them. This one, you can see it quite easily right there. Uh, it's got phosphor bronze. This one you can't see unless you take it apart. I forgot to take pictures when I had it apart, and I'm not going to take it apart again. Sorry, guys. Um, they both have a 30-degree grind on the cutting angle here, and I've sharpened them up on my uh, sharpening system. And although you can see a little bit of a shine right there on this edge, that's just from doing a very light um you know, removing the burr very, very lightly on a strop, you know, and that gave it just a tiny bit of shine right there. I only sharpened the one side. Yeah, same thing on this one. They've got a slightly different treatment for the coating. I think they've probably changed the formula over time a little bit or something. If, let's do a little bit of cut tests and uh, see what we think of that. And uh, let's just try with a little bit of paracord. Just cuts through it, no problem. And uh, maybe you noticed that a little bit. Because I was holding it like this when I cut, I ended up pulling with my index finger back a little bit and it made it come loose. That's one of the important things with both of these kinds of knives. Well, there's one kind of knife, but with both of them. Because this frame lock arm is totally exposed and free, it is easy for you to uh, change it a little bit while you're using it. You have to be much more careful than you are with traditional kinds of knives. Uh, traditional frame locks. Cuts really, really well. Um, oh, let's try it just with a little bit of wood down here so we can see. Woof! Making stuff go flying. Cuts very, very well with that uh, chisel grind right there. And you, know, you can push down or slice very easily. Uh, both of them work very well that way. And it just cuts 
super well. A chisel grind is a good grind once you get used to how you're using it and it just works great. This one, you got that bigger amount of edge. Both of them are under three inches. I could show you, I could show you how well they cut paper, but that won't mean that awful much to you. You know, it cuts quite well. Uh, chisel grind has no problem. That one got on a really good angle there. Oh, this one, you gotta cut that way. They're both very sharp and they just cut really fine. No problem at all. They're at a very low price. If you want to get one of these, I've got links in the description below. Thank you so much for considering buying them. If you do want to buy them, please use my links. That does help the channel out uh, very much. If you want to buy anything from GearBest, anything whatsoever, if you've got the time and you don't mind me knowing what you're going to buy, please send me a link of what you're buying to CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. I can turn it into a referral link. And that way I get a little bit of commission and you don't pay a single penny more. And don't worry, I don't keep track of those things. I don't want to have any record of what you're buying. That's none of my business. Uh, but if you do want to help me out, that's a great way. Some of you have done that before and it's very helpful. And I do thank you so much. So there you go. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. And make sure you check out GearBest. They've got a... November 1111 sale happening. Uh, it's ramping up. It started on November 1st. It's ramping up to uh, peak on November 11th. And then for another nine days, they've got the cool down period of the sale and uh, some more stuff still on sale. They've got games to play where you can win stuff. You can win a an electric bicycle that costs, well, has a value over 500 US dollars. All kinds of other prizes to be won discount codes to be had and one, um, you know, all kinds of good deals. So check out their big sale, their 1111 sale at GearBest in November 2017. Thanks again for watching. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.